dear students, uh, welcome to a very special course on Introduction to Nanoscience and Nanotechnology. I am Dr. Purvej Ahmed and this is the first lecture of the course. So in this first lecture, uh, we will start uh, from the basic definitions of the nano. Uh, so let's proceed towards today's uh, lecture. So uh, whenever we heard the word nano, so we have the question in mind that what is mean uh, nano? So be remember the word nano mean one billionth. I mean nano by itself is nothing but it's actually the prefix. And this prefix mean 10 raised to the power minus uh, nine. So whatever you, uh, you attach, I mean you attach gram, you attach a meter or you attach anything else uh, after the nano, so it would mean uh, 10 raised to power mi uh, minus 9 of that particular thing. So if you, let's suppose if you want to attach meter uh, after nano, or you put a prefix nano before the meter, so it will mean uh, nanometers. So if you attach gram uh, after the nano, so it would mean uh, nanogram and so on. So what actually nano uh, nanometer means, a uh, nanometer means one billionth of a meters. So just like that, if you put something else, I mean, instead of meter, you put a gram, so it would mean nanogram. The nanogram would mean one billionth of a gram. Similarly, if you put, uh, I mean, uh, second, I mean, that is for the time, and you say that you have, instead of meter, you say you have a uh, nanosecond. So nanosecond would mean one billionth of a uh, meter. So in scientific terms, uh, I mean, uh, you want to have uh, the scales of nano in terms of uh, scientific terminologies. For example, in science we have, uh, I mean, uh, we have human hair. So if we refer uh, the length scale that, that of nano in terms of a human hair, so a human hair has the diameters as small as 10,000 nanometer. So that's how scientifically you relate the length of a human hair. And you did, this is the typical uh, same image of the human hair. So this is a brief introduction of uh, a nano. So let me, uh, let me uh, try it again. Uh, let me repeat it again. What is mean by nano? Uh, nano by itself is basically a prefix, uh, which means uh, one billion. So this prefix, if you attach uh, is uh, with a meter, so it would mean nanometer, and nanometer mean one billion of a meter. Similarly, if you attach that a prefix with the uh, uh, with the times unit that is second, so it would mean nanosecond, and nanosecond would mean uh, one billionth of a second. If you attach that uh, with the gram, so it would mean uh, nanogram, and nanogram would mean one billionth of a uh, gram. And scientifically, if you, you utilize uh, the term nano, and you want to measure something uh, that is well known to you, for example, the human hair, so uh, the diameter of human hair is equal to 10,000 uh, nanometers. So let be a more, uh, a bit more specific about uh, the nano. Uh, so for that, you can consider the example of a child, you can see it here in this particular figure. So here you can see that this child, uh, it height, the, the height of this child is about uh, one meter. And if you consider, if, if you put that one uh, meter and two uh, nanometer, so it would equal to one billion nanometers. I mean, that is how you convert the scale. I mean, you're already familiar with the convergence of the scales and your basic class. I mean, while you were doing your matriculation, so you are familiar with the uh, SI system. Uh, and you also know that how to convert uh, the scales, uh, I mean, and different multiples. So, uh, I mean, uh, one meter height of this child if you convert that into a scale of nano, so it would be equal to uh, one billion nanometers. So there, uh, uh, here you can see uh, a typical ruler. Uh, and this ruler, you can see that you can start it here from uh, one meter, uh, which we took it here for uh, the, the height of a kid. So one meter is basically equal to uh, one billionth nanometer. 
and here if we just want to put that in a power of 10 so here you can see that uh, 1 meter is equal to uh, 10 to power 0 meter and then uh, you have 10 centimeters so 10 centimeters is equal to 10 raised to power minus 1 meter and if you proceed again toward the smaller one that is 1 centimeter so 1 centimeter is 10 raised to power minus 2 meter and again uh, you're proceeding toward the smallest uh, so 1 millimeter uh, 1 millimeter 10 raised to power minus 3 meter then you have 100 micrometer and that is equal to 10 raised to power minus 4 meter then you have uh, 10 micrometers and 10 micrometers is equal to 10 raised to power minus 5 meters then 1 micrometers and 1 mic micrometer that is equal to 10 raised to power minus 6 then 100 nanometers and 100 nanometer is equal to 10 raised to power minus uh, 7 meters then 10, uh, 10 nanometers and 10 nanometers is equal to 10 raised to power minus 8 uh, meter and then we have 1 nanometer and 1 nanometer is equal to 10 raised to power minus 9 meters and if we proceed toward further smaller length that is up to 0 0.1 nanometers so that is equal to 10 raised to power minus 10 meter which is the diameter of a hydrogen uh, atom so that is how you proceed from bigger uh, toward uh, the smallest I mean you start from the height of a kid and you proceed towards the diameter of the atom and that is how you you observe that how the length scale uh, I mean it changes from a bigger one to, uh, to uh, the smallest one and if you consider for uh, the nano that 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 we could will consider further in this lecture nano uh, basically when we refer to a nano something uh, which we call a nano so that will basically lie between range from this one I mean from this particular point uh, up to this particular scale that is if something has uh, a length and between the, the, the scale that is from 10 raised to power minus 7 to 10 raised to power minus 9 meter uh, so that we will call that lies in the nano but that is necessary for uh, I mean for an object which should have at least one dimension in this particular region so we will call that as a nano object or we will call that a nano, a nano events or we will call that uh, a nano uh, quantity or uh, uh, nano things so what is nanotechnology so let's we have uh, a formal definitions for uh, the nanotechnology uh, you already know about the technology that what technology is you mean that it's the techniques uh, I means uh, on the basis of the knowledge trying to do something to develop something I mean normally uh, you, you are well familiar with the with the term uh, technology so uh, when we have the prefix uh, nano before the technology so again the definitions uh, it a bit change so uh, how we have the proper definitions or we can say that uh, a formal definitions for the nanotechnology so the proper definition for the nanotechnology will look like this uh, that uh, it's a field of applied science uh, in which we focused on design formations identifications and applications of materials and devices on the nano scales I mean this this is the thing which we should have I mean the, the above from here up to this point I mean this this is the general definition for uh, the technology I mean so whenever you heard the word technology so a technology you means a field of applied science focus on designs formation identifications and application uh, and application of materials and devices I mean to this extent we have this as a definitions for uh, the technology but uh, if you proceed further that is we saying that on the nanoscale so then the technology is converted into nanotechnology so what actually it means uh, what is mean by nanotechnology and nanotechnologies mean that something or uh, some event or some applications we want to try at a nanoscale that is uh, between uh, 1 to 100 nanometers 
I mean, whatever we trying to do, or whatever we, uh, we intend to do in a smaller scale with at least one dimension in the range of one to 100 nanometers. So we call that, uh, we call that it lies in the field of uh, nanotechnology. And we remember here we have one thing that is a field of applied science. I mean, we have the sciences uh, like we have biology, uh, we have chemistry, we have physics. I mean, all of these that, that they are sciences, but out of these sciences, uh, some of the sciences, I mean, uh, it is are those uh, where can be, uh, which can be applied in a practical life. So here, uh, nanotechnology uh, is basically the applied field of science. And be remember, later on we will define it in full detail, that nanotechnology, it counts all the, uh, the sciences here. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's combined physics uh, with biology, uh, it combined chemistry with the physics, uh, it, co it combined computer science with the physics and so on. Uh, in short words, we can say that it's a multidisciplinary field, I mean, where we unite all the field into a single field. I mean, by itself, simply we can say that uh, nanotechnology by itself, uh, it's not a new field. It's basically a field that is the combinations of all the other field. I mean, it include physics, it include chemistry, it include biology, it can include, it can include computer science, it include uh, engineering, and even in some action, we can say that it also include the fine arts. So uh, this is something uh, informal you have about uh, the nanotechnology. So that is uh, what is nanotechnology, all the technology that we want to develop, or we want to do, or we want to accelerate, or we want to focus. Uh, at a nanoscale, so uh, that basically means uh, nanotechnology. I mean, the technology that you want to do, or you want to apply, or you want to develop at the nanoscale, so we call that nanotechnology. So the only difference is the scale. So now we have the questions that uh, we, de we define nanotechnology, uh, we mentioned uh, some important fact about nanotechnology, uh, and we also mentioned about that what actually the materials that we call uh, nanomaterials are. So now the question is that how we can make the nanomaterial or how we can synthesize the nanomaterials, or in short terms, what are the methods of making the nanomaterials or the, the nanoparticle. So uh, we basically have two big approaches. The first one is called the top-down approach or the top-down methods. So what actually we, we do in these methods? Uh, in this technique, normally we have uh, some uh, a big object or we have a heavy object. And that heavy object or big size object we cut it into smaller and smaller pieces until we reach to the nanoscale region, or we, we reach to the nanoscale uh, dimensions. So that is called top-down uh, uh, approach. I mean, we, we, we get the thing and a bigger size and a bulk, I mean a larger size, and we cut it down to a smaller scale. And then we have another approach, uh, which is called bottom-up. So what is mean by the bottom up? Uh, bottom up mean that uh, we have atoms, and these atoms we put together uh, one by one until we reach to uh, the nanoscale uh, dimension. That is, uh, we develop the bigger object by combinations of the atom. I mean, we put the atom uh, side by side until we reach the dimension between one to 100 nanometers. And be remember, for the nanomaterials, uh, I mean, it's, it's compulsory that they should have at least one dimension in the range of uh, one to 100 nanometer. So uh, what we have in short, in short, uh, if we have a big object and we cut that into pieces to bring it into nanoscale regions, so that particular method is called top-down methods. And bottom-up approach or bottom-up technique is the one in which we combine atoms side by side uh, we want to grow a materials from a smaller scales until we reach to uh, the nano scales uh, dimensions. So that technique uh, where we put atoms side by side and grow a uh, bigger size material so that it can lie in the range of one to 100 nanometer 
uh, with at least one dimensions uh, in that particular uh, uh, range uh, we call that uh, bottom up uh, approach i mean we are we are uh, growing the material from the atomic scale and the top down approach mean that we are we are cutting down the material from a bigger size to uh, the nanoscale region so these are the two basic techniques for the growth of uh, the nanomaterials so here uh, you uh, in this uh, particular figure you can see a lot of example uh, everyday life example uh, of uh, nanoscale things or nanoscale materials i mean here you can see uh, the scale of nano things are uh, nanometer and more i mean here you can see that uh, it's a dust mite and dust mite you can see that the scale is uh, 200 micrometers and here you say uh, we have an ant and this is the feet the feet of an ant and you you see here is almost uh, approximately five uh, micrometers and here you can see human here human here has a diameter in the range of uh, approximately 60 to 120 uh, micrometers ply ash and ply ash is approximately from 10 to 20 micrometer red blood cell is approximately from 7 to 8 micrometer i mean here you can see different object and on this side you can see as well uh, head of a pen that is from 1 to 2 millimeters i mean again here there, there are so many things uh, and you can see here uh, the scale as well this is a self-assembled uh, nature inspired structures uh, that is uh, many tens of nanometers and here you can see nanotubes nanotubes of the electrode that, i mean the well-known nanomaterials that we call carbon nanotubes so carbon nanotubes can have a diameter approximately 1.3 nanometers i mean they can have smaller or you can grow uh, nanomaterials uh, i mean the well-known nanomaterials the carbon nanotubes you can grow that in the laboratory and they can have a typical size or uh, the diameters uh, that's that that lie in the range of approximately 1.3 nanometer similarly you can have a uh, buckyball buckyball is also one kind of, of a carbon nanomaterials very famous uh, carbon nanomaterials and buckyball can have a diameter approximately one uh, nanometers so just like that you have many many nanomaterial that uh, we will discuss in the coming lecture so i think this is all we have uh, for this lecture i mean it's somehow a short introduction of the term uh, nano so you have to stay tuned with the next lecture uh, that should be the next uh, the next lecture will be lecture number two and that lectures uh, we will further explain the term nano uh, and we will try to explain that why nano is interesting i mean that that is that that will be the key theme of the next lecture i mean in the first lecture we just explained uh, the meaning of the nano now in the coming lecture that is lecture number two in that lectures we will explain why nano is interesting i mean why we are taking so much interest in the nano so that will be the key theme of the next lecture. So stay tuned with the next lecture. Till then, bye-bye.